Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about a new firmware, the 26 Fix 8, which is just released. Um, let me go back to the start to see what it has been added. So, uh, the first, first thing you notice uh, the park position uh, makes sure it's all the way to zero. I'll show you why. Um, also, the standby, uh, it's preferably to leave the position 50, speed 5, but uh, uh, down the menu except time, it shows all the way down the time I'd skipped, which is good things to have. You can uh, uh, skip uh, after I do does the motion with SimHub, for example, to go directly to park. So you can leave that to uh, skip. Um, then the auto park actuators, uh, if you have a traction loss um, or surge, you can adjust it wherever you like. Uh, right now, all the actuators I have here, they're vertical. Even the build tester, I have set it as vertical axis. So it will start uh, from the bottom, uh, fully relaxed. Uh, so um, I'll just I, I can just put some five actuators because uh, the fifth one is the belt tensioner. Um, then you can adjust the stroke on each one. The stroke for the belt tensioner is hundred. Six is not connected to anything, so later um, then um, of course the each screw for each one uh, five millimeter is uh, these actuators and I have the same one for the belt tensioner I don't have things specific also it's not using each screw I just using for the calculations um, then um, let's see what else um, mm -hmm. Now, I have a power save mode, which um, after 10 minutes, it was set on previous firmware to turn off the LCD in 10 minutes, uh, but um, you can change it uh, to power off the vertical, the ver actually, let me do this one here, the vertical drives, uh, or you can uh, power off everything if you have uh, traction loss tools power off this too, so in case you forget the rig on, it will power off, but uh, it makes sense mostly to power off the vertical ones, so don't hold power to load overnight if you forget them to uh, power them off. Um, these servo drives are cool and cooling, so they're not gonna overheat too much, but uh, you never know if uh, some condition happens, so you can have them power off after a while. Now, how long it will take before the power off? Um, you can adjust it to the timer. You can leave the default 10 minutes, or you can increase it um, up to 60 minutes delay. So it won't uh, power off in between of uh, adjusting things. Um, I keep it about 10 minutes. It's good uh, time for me. Um, then uh, the back track uh, this one um, it's how much it will uh, back track the actuator so it will relieve the motor from torque uh, so for this ones for each screw 5mm uh, it can compress and then go back uh, 75 pulses and uh, fully release the the load. Um, you can see that if you go to the servo drives how much torque uh, they hold um, with uh, DN2 you can see how much are they unpowered right now? Yeah right now they're unpowered. Okay so I activate them so you can see how much uh, 
percent the hold right now it's holding two percent torque after that okay so you seen I, I powered with the power down this is what happens uh, when it's uh, going to uh, uh, power off the motors you can activate them with the power down or using the force of flying button uh, press it release it it will activate again the power to the motors um, this is just a remote power on trick in case you need to have the power for any reason so uh, I think this is active no maybe this one okay so you can move it up a bit test it so to activate it if I go to power off mode you can press it and then release it it should power up um, now like I said this is the backtrack for the for these actuators uh, of course you can uh, change it for example for the belt tensioner I used 100 I could use even zero if I wanted because it doesn't have any torque it just reaches the torque and then stops there um, or uh, uh, you can increase it uh, higher if you have a different lead screw that develops torque so you can see the torque it's developing it's uh, DN2 so you can monitor that to see uh, if it's uh, below 25% you're good depending on the load on the rig you may have a rig that it's uh, kind of heavy so it will hold more um, okay so let me see what else I have here of course the belt tensioner settings now there's option for uh, belt tensioner, one belt tensioner like I have now or you can set the second one and uh, what it does uh, you can uh, use the trim switch I don't have installed in this which I don't really need it with the sim hub because uh, everything is controlled from sim hub so I can adjust the uh, position a little bit if I need with, uh, uh, with the button box but uh, yeah that's a cool thing there and um, the traction low scale, this is not really needed. But uh, yeah, that's it from the controller. So right now, I have everything here wired. All right. So let me. So the settings in Sim Hub. So. Of course, this is the MC, uh, the COM port, the assignment for the actuators, which is which, and um, on the extra settings, you'll see some uh, extra things like uh, uh, it won't allow the control to start if you're missing um, uh, a power on the servo. For example, if I forget to power on my belt tensioner will move um, you can disable motors on uh, idling so what it will do let's, let's show it enable motion so you see it powers up with the manual control uh, we're just gonna put on the side a little bit so it's on its side now I'm gonna disable the motion I had a tiny click, which meant it's a rough now. I can rotate it with my hand. See, the tensioner, the power. So as soon as I 
can have the motion again to power everything because power now everything is powered here I can move it so this is a neat trick to pause the power turn off the power between uh, using the rig so it will cut down on noise on EMI at the 10 kilohertz on older drives and um, also when disconnecting the controller like to turn off sim hub or the game you can have it to disable all motors so even traction loss and shorts or just the vertical ones or keep the power on if you want to have it on at the end of manually uh, of course it won't disable the power on the vertical actuators unless they're all the way down to zero that's why I in the park position I suggested to be uh, uh, set to zero exactly so when it gets to zero it will disconnect so we, there's not gonna be any drop when it's powers off and um, using it nothing uh, <laughs> nothing dropped because already in the park position so um, so another thing is it, it will disable the position to go to the park as soon as the motion stops uh, this is the skip standby setting that I have on the controller as well but you can enable it from here too um, also you can use the software to control the park and park so this is what it does here so it will automatically uh, control the park on the park of the actuators So again, some more information you'll see here, except the firmware. Uh, you'll see the number of actuators, the positions, um, part positions. So if they're all zero there, you're good. If you see one, maybe that's why it doesn't turn off the power. And uh, also it will show uh, which ones is configured as uh, horizontal for surge attraction loss. So you see when I change the setting on the controller, uh, for uh, five vertical actuators, uh, it the other two they report here 50%. Uh, so they park in the middle. Um, so the active motors, five of them are okay. Um, six at seven, <laughs> not ready. Uh, don't see power. But uh, since I don't have them defined here, unused. It won't block me from using it. Uh, that's pretty much it. I think I covered everything. Um, but yeah, it's a huge improvement in uh, automation and safety. Um, I hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching.